Hey guys, this is Jay here from Gym Aware. Really hope you're enjoying Coach Tomato's podcast series so far. Here at Gym Aware, we've just released our brand new VVT product, Flex. Um, so I just want to give you a bit of insight into what it is and how it could help you as a coach or athlete. Flex uses brand new laser optic technology to measure barbell velocity, so like Gym Aware, it's highly accurate. The device connects straight to your iPhone or iPad. We've had an independent validation study to confirm that Flex is highly accurate. We have loads of awesome features already and our experienced development team continues to work on software updates each and every day. Key performance metrics are available including both peak and mean velocity, peak and mean power, distance, bar position and bar path. If you guys want any more information on flex, velocity based training, just be sure to reach out, go to our website, check us out on socials as well. But for now we hope you enjoy the rest of Coach DeMayo's podcast. The world of strength and conditioning is filled with some fantastic practitioners that are always searching for more. But more what? What are strength and conditioning coaches searching for to better their ability to prepare their athletes? Well, what about cutting edge information or a place where you can find different opinions from forward thinking coaches on what you're doing, how you're doing, and try to get feedback to be better for your athletes? Or what about a place where you'll find like-minded coaches that can provide solid coaching advice and career development for you as you progress through your career as a strength and conditioning professional? Well, this is exactly why we built the Strength Coach Network. You'll have access to exclusive monthly content on top of the sensationally active forum that we have where you can communicate with coaches all over the world to find those answers that you're looking for to help you be a better practitioner for your athletes. So make sure you hop on over to strengthcoachnetwork.com slash CVASPS, that's strengthcoachnetwork.com slash C-V-A-S-P-S, and get your 48-hour trial for only a dollar. I look forward to seeing you in the Strength Coach Network. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the 72nd episode of Outside the Rack, brought to you by Kinetic Performance, the makers of Gym Aware. In this show, we're just going to try to dive a little deeper into the minds of the top practitioners in the world of sport performance to learn a little bit more about who they actually are and how they got to where they are today. Today, we are joined by the strength, speed, and conditioning coach at Australia High, excuse me, Australia Foothills High School, Clay Buley. Clay, man, great to see you. Thanks for being with us today. Hey, uh, thank you so much, Coach DeMeo, for having me on here. You know, it was a pleasure being uh, on the Instagram live conversations a couple months ago and kind of connecting with that and learning more about each other. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to come back on and talk a little more. It's a privilege and an honor. Well, I'm excited to catch up, man. I'm glad you're doing well, especially in this, I don't even know what adjective we're using at this point during this time, <laughs> but uh, I'm glad we could chop it up a little bit here before you're doing well. But before we get too far into this, bud, who is Clay? Well, Clay's, Clay's a husband, Clay's a father, Clay's a coach. Uh, Clay's just a guy who's trying to do his best every single day. He's not a perfect man, but he tries really hard to be. And there's lots of times where he has good days. There's lots of times where he has bad days. But the main thing that Clay's trying to do is just get a little better every day. That's one of the big monikers in our program is 1% better. We're not asking you to be perfect, and we're not asking you uh, to be flawless, but we are asking you to grow. And I try to hold myself to that same standard that all the kids are being held to. And it's just about constant and continual growth. Just be better the second time than you were the first time, third time better than the second time, fourth time better than the third time. And if we add enough consistency, if we add enough discipline, we add enough work, then eventually we're going we're, we're to end up where we need to be. And so that's, that's a little about me. You know, just turned 32 this year. Uh, I got a wife. We've been married for eight years. Got uh, one daughter. Uh, she's four. In fact, they're downstairs right now, probably watching something on Disney Plus. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll catch up with them later. But, uh, you know, Clay lives a very laid back lifestyle. I go to work and I'm at home. Those are pretty much the only places I'm ever at. And, you know, love going to work every day. And even more importantly, I love coming home every day. The second one's big, man. The second one's big. Exactly. Yep. I, uh, I don't. I never dread going into work and I never dread coming home. Uh, one thing me and my wife talk about all the time is we're very blessed that we have a quiet home that's filled with love and compassion for each other and for others. Uh, we often have, you know, friends over, well, back when you could have friends over and there wasn't a stigma, uh, you know, we'd often have friends over, we'd have play dates over, we'd have family over at our house. And it was always a place that people wanted to go to. And that's always 
the type of home I wanted to cultivate where, you know, it's a place of peace that people can come into versus a chaotic place that people have to endure being at. I want our house to be the type of place that people naturally gravitate towards. That's rad, man. That's awesome. It's, you know, we, we've gotten to chat a few times since, you know, even before and then after that IG live. And I think that that 1% moniker is really fitting, you know, with what you do with the kids and how you're trying to build the program there and grow and can you continue, excuse me, moving forward, which is why I'm excited to hear about number one, because as someone that is trying, you know, to just keep stacking days, eventually you're going to run into a learning situation that gives you that aha moment. Mm -hmm. So if you wouldn't mind, describe a learning situation that brought about an epiphany in your career. Well, that epiphany happened when I was interning at Jacksonville University and I was under uh, Coach Andrew Bates, who's still there, and Coach Marcy Hoppe, who was their director of Olympic performance at the time. And now she's the uh, head of women's basketball performance at Mississippi State. And so Coach Hoppe does amazing work over there in Starkville. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with her, but, you know, definitely somebody I would recommend to being on the show. She's, she's uh, pretty incredible and, and I am a much better coach having been under her uh because of that but a big epiphany we had when i was interning under her is she it was and it was just a very small bit of dialogue dropped at the end of a conversation that really stuck with me she said clay you know there's gonna be lots of jobs that come over never take a job just for the sake of taking a job take a job because it's the right job and that piece of advice has really stuck with me and that piece of advice has saved my career and on, quite honestly you know, it's probably saved my marriage too, uh, because when you go into different places, when you take different jobs, when you're moving, if, you know, if you've got a family, it's not just you going, it's everybody else going as well. And so uh, there have been opportunities where I've, you know, uh, when I was still in the college ranks that I could have taken a job that would have not been a good fit, would have not been a good fit for the family, would have not been a good fit for me. And I could have taken that job and it's nothing against nothing against the job itself, but it would have just caused a lot of issues. It would have been going to a place that you know I'm far away from my family. She's far away from her family. You know, our child would not have known her grandparents. Would have not known her cousins, and it would have definitely put a lot of strain on our relationship. And quite honestly, it would have put a, a strain financially on our relationship because they they weren't that well paying, and uh, and being patient. And finding the right job eventually led me to where I'm at at Australia Foothills, where, you know, by the grace of God, I am close to my family. I'm, we're relatively close to my wife's family. It's not uncommon, uh, you know, to have a cousin day, to have people come over to our house, go over to other people's house. Uh, and so that we're able to build up our family life and my career at the same time, because I was able to find the right place and the right job. I could have taken a bunch of other jobs that would have not allowed us to have that opportunity, but being patient and listening to Coach Hoppe's advice, I took the right job in the right situation, which led us to have the best life we can right now. Crazy that people like to talk about, it's not crazy. It's fitting that people like to talk about always dressing or acting like the next job. When in reality, if you went for the right job, you'd be dressing where you are and you'd be wanting exactly. to live where you are and you'd be working where you are. And I think that's brilliant. I think that that's a great piece of advice that all too often people just think it's about my next step. It's about my next step. And, and maybe, you know, like if you're a GA, like I get it, but I think a lot of people don't look at all of the things and they just chase, you know, t-shirts and logos instead of the whole nine yards. And, and honestly, you know, as a young coach, I based myself off the logo at the start of my career, you know, and as the longer you get into this, logos don't matter, you know, and certain logos that you think have a lot of credibility behind them, you know, all that glitters isn't gold, and certain logos that you know nothing about, I mean, shoot, I'm wearing one in my head right now on my hat, and there's a lot of substance behind it, and it's just a logo a lot of people don't know about. And so it's finding the right place for you and the right job for you, which allows you not only to grow as a coach, but grow as a person. Because, you know, anybody who has a family, anybody, you know, who has a, who's a little, you know, longer in the tooth knows that if home ain't right, your work won't be right. Uh, you have to make sure to take care of the first one. And 
when you're in the right job and you, and you really like your job, man, it makes things so much, it makes things so much easier when you don't dread going in. Cause I mean, and this isn't just the strength and conditioning world. This is kind of everywhere. Talk to anybody who hates their job. Chances are there's a lot of deep seated unhappiness in there. And, you know, I understand there's many people who make sacrifices and they maybe work jobs they don't like to provide. And, you know, my, my condolences for that and, and the sacrifice that those people make don't go unnoticed. But when you actually talk to somebody who really, really loves their job, when you talk to somebody who really values what they do and believes in what they do and they're able to earn a good living, chances are you're dealing with a happy individual. And chances are you're dealing with an individual who has a lot of fulfillment both in and outside of their occupation. No doubt, man. But I think that when you look at all that, to be able to take that step back and to be able to not just examine the situations that are at hand and what the opportunities are moving forward, you also have to be following the similar methodology or uh, psychological aspect of what you've been talking about. And that is 1% better and stacking days to grow. And when you tie those together, you got to ask a lot of questions and you've got to be willing to dig and be questioned at times, which leads me to number two. If you could ask one question and you know you would get the answer, what would that be and why? Well, I think, and this sounds like a very, very, very simple question, but when people answer it honestly, it really has a lot of impact. How are you doing today? And just an honest feedback when I ask my athletes and cause I tell them like, Hey, when, when I ask you questions, I want honest feedback. Cause if I don't get honest feedback, I don't know how to help you. I joke around all the time. Uh, cause coach Clay's dad jokes are very well known in the Australia foothills weight room. And I take pride in my corny dad jokes. And, uh, one of my favorite ones is, Hey, if you're not feeling good, you have to tell me I haven't mastered my telepathy yet. Let me know. I'm working on it, but I'm not quite there yet. And usually that always gets a <laughs> coach. Usually gets one of those responses. But the, the question of how are you today and honest feedback really helps because there's times because you ask kids, I mean, sometimes when you ask kids how you feeling today and you ask for honesty, you'll get some honest answers and you'll get, you'll get some tough feedback. Uh, I mean, there's times when I've asked kids, you know, how are you, how are you doing today? And they're like, oh, not good. And I kind of probe, but I, um, I got kicked out of my house last night. I'm sleeping on a friend's house. Well, looks like you're probably very underrested. Looks like probably you're stressed and this might be a tough workout for you. Let's, let's adjust this a little bit. And more importantly, let's talk and let's figure out how to help you type of thing. And so just that honest, just the honest question of how are you? And being honest with the feedback. And I try to be very, very honest with my kids as well. Uh, there's, there were, there's times when I tell them like, Hey guys, I'm having a really tough day. So I really need you guys to focus listening to the demonstration and explanation. So you know what to do. Cause I really don't want to blow up on anybody. And it's not fair to you guys for me to blow up on you because of things that have happened earlier. And I'm feeling a little stressed. Are we cool with that? Yeah, coach. We're cool with that. All right. Thanks. And that honest and open communication is huge. Are there times that I'm perfect with that? Absolutely not. I wish I was, but you know, I'm trying hard. I'm trying hard to be but just asking your athletes, how are you feeling and meaning it and expecting an honest answer. And the thing that I've been learning how to do for over a decade now is when they're telling me how they're feeling, not thinking and not trying to compose my response, but just earnestly listening to exactly what they're saying and giving my full attention. Uh, when that type of trust and relationship has been put in, you're going to get, you're going to get a lot out of your athletes, not just from, the performance side, but from the relationship building side as well. So how are you doing is the question. That's awesome, man. You know, I think that a lot of people are going to look at that and say, well, that could be kind of trivial, but when you really break out, break down into it and you dive into the layers of it, it's pretty deep. It's a, it's, it's one of those things that it's, it's kind of like a crystal clear lake that when you look down, you know, you can see the bottom, but it's not until you get in that water that you realize that bottom's 50 feet deep. 
And it seems like such a simple thing. It's something that, you know, gets trivialized. Like, oh, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing okay. Okay, cool. And it becomes a small talk. But in reality, if you, if you honestly expect and you tell them, like, I expect you to be honest with me. I'll be honest with you. If you're having a bad day, tell me. It's all good. And then you'll learn things about the kids that you didn't know. I mean, kids whose family lives aren't great. Kids who uh, home lives aren't great. Kids who are going through depression. Kids who have had, you know, you know, unfortunately, suicidal thoughts or suicidal tendencies. And, and, you know, for them to let you know that that's happening. Okay, well, I'm going to, I'm going to number one, probably report this kid to maybe our, our psychologist so we can try to get this kid some more help. Because lots of times when a kid opens up to me, it might be the first one they ever open up to. And so I'm kind of the first line of defense. And that's, and, and that's, that's happened in the past where kids have opened up to me and we've been able to get the kid help because they've opened up to me. Uh, and then from there, just letting them know that I love them, I care about them. Uh, we had our we had our last football game, uh, but this Friday night made the made the playoffs and did and uh, unfortunately fell a little short at the end. And I had a lot of seniors who have been through a lot of stuff with me come up and tell me thank you so much for listening and for caring and for being honest with us. Absolutely, that's it's rad, dude. Worthy. Yeah, man, that's awesome. But, you know, as a guy who's there for the kids and always growing with this growth mindset and trying to build the program continually there, tie that in with a pandemic and some, let's just call them initi uh, interesting initiatives that we have to follow. Interesting is a good word for it. Yeah, interesting no, initiatives. Interesting. interesting. Yeah. What's Clay's escape? Clay's escape is family. Family and training, those are my escapes. I know those are probably two very stereotypical answers you get, but those are my escapes. I mean, shoot, when I pick up my little girl from daycare, uh, we have about a 20 minute commute home. And so it's not uncommon that, you know, uh, that we throw on, you know, Spotify, the Disney hits playlist. Hey, that, that's got some good songs on it. It's not, not uncommon for us to have some sing-alongs on the way home and when we get home. Uh, you know, it's, it could be even something as simple as, you know, just having a family meal and just talking with my wife, talking with my kid and having a good time playing a game of Candyland. That is her favorite board game right now. And she goes all in on Candyland. She loves it. Or even something as simple as just watching a movie together, spending time with one another. That's my escape. And it's, and it's funny. People ask my wife because at work, I'm this big energy guy. I'm, you know, I'm jumping up and down the sidelines. I uh, definitely have some of those stereotypical strength coach tendencies that not everybody in the profession likes, uh, but I'm very much a high energy guy, uh, always moving around. There's always a lot of energy in the weight room. I always like to set the thermometer uh, nice and hot in the weight room with my energy so that the kids can feed off of it. Uh, and so when they ask my wife, they're like, oh, man, how, how do you live with that at home? Is he just going off the walls all the time? She's like, no, he's super low key at the house. And that's how I like to be, you know, I, I get a lot of my energy out at work. And when I'm at home, it's low key time. It's, you know, have a good conversation with my wife, you know, play games with my kid, go on a bike, go on a bike ride with them, go on a family walk, uh, watch a family movie, enjoy a family meal. Uh, that's my big escape is just enjoying time with them because whatever else is going on in the world, whatever's going on at work, I mean, that can wait. That can wait. I'm going to go on this, I'm going to go on this, you know, 20 minute bike ride with my kid. That can wait. It's not that important. And then just my training as well. Iron therapy is the cheapest form of therapy, you know, when you're having a bad day. And I think every strength coach who's listening can smile and can appreciate this. But man, you know, those days when you just hit some good sets with some good weight and some good speed and just feels good, man. Just just sometimes a good workout and a good training session can really turn your day around. And, you know, and I mean, we're, we're strength coaches for a reason. We got to like train ourselves and, you know, all of us probably have those meathead tendencies deep down inside where it's, it just feels good to pump out some weight. It feels good to pump out some good reps and just feels good to kind of escape into your training for a little bit. And so between family and training, it's all the escape I need. Awesome, brother. Clay, man, that's, that's great. And I think that, you know, at the end of it, man, it's be good where you're at, no matter where you're at, man, where you're, whether you're training or at home or in the gym, that that's really what it comes down to. And, that's what we've been talking about more often than not with all this stuff, man, is just be good where you're at, who you're at, and with your, what you're with, and, and, and you'll roll from there. You know, when, when uh, good people are put in the right places, good things tend to happen. 
And so with all of the coaches who are listening, you know, it doesn't matter where you're trying to end up. If you're doing good at the places where you're at, number one, you're going to have an impact where you're at. And number two, it might prepare you for where you're going next. Uh, you know, I think we talked about earlier, we get sometimes sidelines with the next move, the next move when, you know, the one you're at is where your happiness is going to be found. Happiness won't be found in the next job. It'll be what you're doing with the one currently situation that you're in. And uh, it's easy to say, you know, when you're a coach who's, you know, 10 plus years into it versus a coach who's trying to make it as a GA or an unpaid intern. So a little easier to say that, but it, it really is true. And I had a great conversation with another one of my mentors uh, last night, uh, Chad Herring. He was the head at Angelo State when I was there for two years. And now he's uh, working in the private sector and a doctoral candidate at UCF. And we're just talking about, um, you know, how our staff was back in the day and just how enjoyable it was and how fun it was. And man, when you, when you have that love for where you're at and those people you're working with, logos don't even make a difference because you're happy where you're at. No doubt, brother. Well, Clay, man, this is fantastic stuff. Truly appreciate your time as always, brother. It's great to catch up. All the, hey, anytime, Coach. Hey, anytime. Uh, it's always a pleasure, you know, to, to hop on the podcast with you, have conversations with you. I know I get a lot out of every conversation we have. Well, listen, brother, truly appreciate your time. We'll be in touch with you soon, man. Anytime, Cheers, hey, Anything I can do to help you in the future, don't be afraid to let me know. Love to help appreciate you. Appreciate it, Coach. Thanks. Hey, take care. Be safe out there. Have fun with those. Uh,